Hey, it's Vaughn here at your jazzdrumschool.com YouTube channel. Aloha, hope you're doing well. So today I want to share with you and play for you in the style of one of my favorite drummers of all time, Elvin Jones. So I had the great honor of getting to see him play uh, back in the early 90s when I was at Berkeley. He came to the Regatta Bar uh, in, uh, I think it's in Cambridge, uh, in uh, Boston. And it was life transforming because this guy, if you've seen him, you know. If, you, if you've seen Elvin play and you know about his playing uh, or anything you want to share about Elvin, please drop a comment below. I'd love to connect about it. Uh, you know, this guy, he was like a locomotive. There was just nothing stopping him. Uh, the, the pure passion and power of his playing uh, was, it was and still is unmatched, in, in my opinion. Uh, and I had a chance to meet him, and I remember going up to meet him, and, and uh, I just, I mean, he just, he was this huge man, and I just said, uh, you know, uh, uh, Mr. You know, Mr. Jones, thank you so much. That was an incredible performance. I just, I love your drumming. He looked at me and he said, hey, thanks, man. And this is really kind of gruff voice and really, but this kind of this huge man, but you could tell he was like, he seemed like such a kind person too. Uh, and the thing I noticed in front of his drum set, in front of his bass drum, were two stage weights. They're probably like those, I don't know, like about 20 pounds each or at least 10 pounds each. Uh, they were in front of his little 18-inch bass drum. He had them in front of his bass drum uh, to keep it from moving forward. Uh, and that just shows you just like how much power he had. Uh, so anyway, Elvin's just such a great influence on my drumming. And um, if you didn't check out my video about my influences yet, uh, I do a little bit of playing, a little Elvin-ish playing in there too. Uh, but uh, check that out as well. I click on the link. And it's also in the description. But uh, I really uh, just wanted to, just felt like playing. And I just want to play some Elvin stuff for you, all right? Now, I'm not trying to copy him. I'm just, this is kind of, you know, his vibe moving and grooving through my limbs. All right, check it out. Boy, that was fun. Got to do that once in a while, you know? Got to just kind of let it all hang out. Uh, you know, the thing I also love about 
Elvin Jones playing is um, kind of like this, almost like reckless abandon. And, and I don't mean it in, in a bad way. It's like he really wanted to play what he wanted to play. And he played it with so much intensity and so much passion that you, you believed every note he played, you know? And even the notes that maybe weren't exactly like where we would think, oh, we, if we subdivide it, it's gonna, it has to be here. It didn't matter. It was part of the music, you know? It's part of the sound, the fabric that he was, he was weaving, that he was creating with the other musicians. Um, and, uh, you know, I just, I just love it. So I just wanted to share with you, sometimes you know, we just gotta play. And, uh, you know, if you're into like doing videos like that and just kind of just playing, just having fun, just sharing your passion, uh, like, I, like I love to do, I love to know about it too. Drop a comment and, uh, and uh, leave, a, leave a link so we can all go check out your drumming. So one of the things I love about Elvin Jones playing is he has that accent on the third note of the triplet. One and a, uh, two and a, uh, three and a, uh, four and a. Uh. It's just amazing. And it just moves the music forward, just pushes it forward. And just gives it that thing that just is just unstoppable. And uh, I really kind of, I guess I really took that to heart in my playing, and it's one of the things I love uh, to do when I'm playing. And I just think it just, it just opens up the swing so, so much. Now I wanna share with you uh, a quick exercise that you can practice so that you can also start to get that feel on, in your playing. Now I also teach this in my Intro to Jazz Drumming course, and uh, you know, if you're starting out, you're a beginner drummer, why not start off with the juicy stuff, you know? Why not get the good stuff? So the way we get there is we just, we're gonna play our basic spangling pattern on the ride cymbal, but we're gonna uh, change it a little bit. We're gonna play one, then we're gonna do an accent on two, then we're gonna do an, a big accent on the ah of two, ah, and then we're gonna come back down to three. Three, then four, accent, ah, and then one, okay? So one, two, a uh, three, four, a uh, one, two, a uh, three, four, a uh, one, two, a uh, three, four, a uh, one, okay? Like that. Now we're gonna add the hi-hat on two and four. One, two, a uh, three, four, a uh, one, two, a uh, three, Four, a one, two, a three, four, a one, two, a three, four, a one. Now we can add our snare drum on the, the and and the a, uh, so the second and third notes of each triplet group, of each count. We're going to add an accent also to the last note. So one and a, uh, two and a, uh, three and four and ah like this okay so we put it all together one and ah two and ah three and ah four and ah one and ah two and ah three and ah four and ah one and ah two and ah three and ah four and ah one and ah two and ah three and ah four and ah one then you can add the bass drum on quarter notes if you want one and I two and I three and I four and I one and I two and I three and I four and I one and I two and I three and I four and I one. And I'm kind of feathering the bass drum, right? I'm not whacking it. I'm really kind of hitting it nice and light. Uh, but of course, you can hit it harder too for accents if you want as well, like uh, Mr. Jones used to do. All right, so that's kind of the basic uh, idea. And let me play a little bit for you. I'll kind of give you kind of a bird's eye view. You kind of see how it all fits together. One, two, a one, two, a three. Now, when I'm playing this groove for real in the real world of music or, you know, in, on a gig, uh, 
I'm not going to play the snare drum accent on every every uh, like every count, like one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh. I'm actually going to lay low on counts one and three, and I'm going to really kick it on counts two and four. So one and a two and a uh, three and a four and uh, and a two and a uh, three and a four and a. Uh. So check this out. One, two, a one, a two, a three, a four. So it's an absolute joy to play this groove and a couple things you might want to think about when you're playing too is to keep it real loose. That's one of the things I always marveled at when I would see uh, Elvin Jones play was how loose he is, you know, just so relaxed and just fluid. And uh, you know, you really want to get that. You don't want to, this is not a tense kind of thing. Uh, and when you're playing your ride stuff, you really want to open it up, open up that playing. Uh, if you need help with your ride cymbal playing and really opening it up and pulling that sound out of the cymbal, check out my Intro to Jazz Drumming course. I really spend a lot of time and a lot of care to teach how I do that, how I pull that sound out of the cymbal. That's the thing that also made uh, Mr. Jones playing so uh, amazing was just that ability to it wasn't like you know yeah he was hitting hard but he was pulling the sound out of the drums it wasn't like beating it into the drums and there's a big difference uh, and those of you who have, have been playing a long time you know what I'm talking about uh, so I you know really uh, that's just like for me is the best way to go to really have that technique that pulls that sound out of the cymbal so I hope you enjoyed it and uh, if you haven't subscribed already please consider subscribing to the channel, like the video so it can kind of get around YouTube, circulate a little easier, and keep swinging, my friend.